Hello, my name is Spiros Gosinakis. I am an assistant professor at the University of the Aegean, and the work I'm going to present you has been done together with George Anastasakis, postdoctoral researcher in the same university. Our paper is called Touch Your Own Device, a COVID-safe alternative to multi-touch interactions with public touchscreens. So, as you can understand from the title, it has to do with alternative interaction techniques with touchscreens because of the pandemic. So, why touchscreens? Well, touchscreens are a quite old technology. They've been here since some decades ago, from the era of the old information kiosks that you might still remember from the 90s if you're old enough. But they are still here in public places. True, there are plenty of alternative interaction modalities, but touchscreens offer direct interaction, they are accurate enough, and they are really intuitive. So nowadays, we can still find public touchscreens in museums, ATMs, airports, libraries, malls, and so on. From simple point-and-click applications to fancy multi-touch tables. Now, what is the problem? There are already previous studies claiming that touchscreens are responsible for the transmission of dangerous bacteria. People are touching at the same spots with bare hand, and probably they are not cleaned that often, both the screens and the hands. But now, with COVID-19 pandemic, the situation is much worse. As expected, the experts say that we should avoid touching public surfaces with our hands, so inevitably, touchscreens should be avoided, or at least be cleaned after every user interaction, which is not always possible. So, if we don't want to shut down these devices, it might be good to find an alternative way of interacting with them. And what are our options? We can use a handheld controller or prop, but if it's a shared object, it still won't solve the problem. Why not use mid-air gestures? Well, first, you need to add an extra device to your touchscreen for that. Also, it's not very accurate. Its success depends on the lighting condition, the user's clothing, and so on. And it's tiresome if it's done for too long, because you hold your arms high, without any physical support. This is known as the gorilla arm effect. I recently read an article that proposes foot-based user interactions as an alternative for touchscreens. Well, okay, but it's still a new metaphor. There's going to be usability issues, and so on. So, a final option is to have the user interact with the system through her personal device, like smartphone or smartwatch, which is something they are already familiar with. And that's the path that we also took for our research. Well, we didn't actually invent the wheel or something. These modalities have been studied in the past, and there have been applications where the mobile has been used as a remote control. Based on the studies, it seems that the use of the device as a touchpad similar to the touchpad found in common laptops, is more effective to pressing fixed buttons or to tilt and turn the device. Also, it has been found that relative coordinate mapping is more accurate than absolute mapping. And given that, it's better that the smartwatch is avoided because of the small screen for drag gestures. Now, what do we propose and how does it differ from previous studies and works? First, we propose a universal solution meaning that you don't need to change the software running in the touchscreen device, whatever that might be. You just add an extra service to the device. Also, users don't have to download an app or anything. All they need to do is scan a QR code. A web page opens and the mobile becomes their touchpad. As simple as that. Second, we support more than simple point-and-click interactions. The user can perform drag gestures or even two-finger gestures, giving her the ability to interact with a variety of applications dragging things around, zooming or rotating photos, and so on. And third, in our study, we didn't emphasize in the interaction technique. As I mentioned already, similar techniques have been studied before. We evaluated the system as a whole. We wanted to find out how would the user feel if she could actually take her own phone and interact with a fancy public device. What's her experience? How does it compare to the original, to the actual use of the touchscreen? and whether she'd be happy to do that again out in the public. So, this is our architecture on the right. I won't go into every detail of it, let me simply present the idea and how we implemented it in our prototype. So, there are two machines, one is the mobile device of the user and the other is the touchscreen, here called controlled machine, and they are both connected to the internet. Now, when the user scans the QR code, a page is loaded on the mobile phone that is her interface. In our current implementation, it's just a large grey area, which operates as the touchpad, 
and the blue button on the lower end, which is used for drag gestures. So, users can use a single finger to control a remote pointer and tap on any place to send the tap. Or they can use one finger to press the lower blue button and the second finger to drag elements around. If they place two fingers on the gray area, they can perform gestures such as zoom or rotate. So the web page is collecting these gestures from the browser using JavaScript and transmitting them to the machine through web sockets. Then they are transformed to respective multi-touch actions and executed. So, if an image is a thousand words, as they say, then probably a video is a million words. So that's me using the system with my own mobile device. The software running on the screen is a nice and playful application about the life and works of director Tim Burton. And it is the one that we also used in our study. So here you can see me performing various actions with the application. Ok, let's move on. Now, our study has been done in the laboratory. We would love to do it out there in the wild, but it was the lockdown period. So, we had 22 users, gender balanced, 12 male and 10 female, aged between 22 and 52. Most of them had an Android device and the screen dimensions ranged from 4.3 to 6.5 inches. We had a touchscreen monitor installed in our laboratory running the application that you saw before. Each user had to interact with the application using both modalities, smartphone and traditional touchscreen. To avoid any order effects, half of the users started with the smartphone and the others vice versa. The scenario was the same in both cases. They had to perform some tasks with the application that included dragging elements around, moving and rotating photos, spinning wheels and even free drawing. Each task was described by the investigator and users could perform at their own pace. After each modality, they had to fill a system usability scale and the attractive questionnaire for user experience. Also, they had to answer some extra questions, asking their opinion about the smartphone interaction. All smartphone actions were recorded by the system and we also observed and took notes on how users were holding their phone and how they were reacting during their experience. So, let's see the results. All participants completed the scenario successfully in both conditions. As expected, the direct touchscreen input was easier and faster, but we already knew that. The point of our study was to see how much worse did the smartphone control score and if it can be considered a reliable alternative. So, we were happy to find out that it wasn't that much worse and the users generally enjoyed it. In the system usability scale, there was a significant drop in usability for the smartphone but still, the score is considered high. In the user experience questionnaire, both modalities generated similar responses. They are placed in the desired category, with the touchscreen scoring slightly higher in the pragmatic quality and the smartphone similarly higher in the hedonic quality. Regarding the user's opinion about the system, the majority liked it, found it COVID safe and considered it a practical solution. This was also confirmed in the open discussion we had with them afterwards. Here, we have to notice that there were some users that said they avoid connecting to public Wi-Fi's for security reasons. Finally, an unexpected, at least for me, finding was that not all users hold their smartphones the way I thought they would. You can see my assumptions in the images. So, I thought that all people hold their smartphones with their non-dominant hand and interact with it with the index finger of their dominant. And my assumption was that one could use the thumb to tap the blue button and perform drag gestures. But I was surprised to see that there were at least five users who held the phone with the dominant hand and used their thumb to tap. So naturally, they were having trouble to hold the blue button for drag gestures. So we decided to make an improvement. We added two more methods to signify the drag. Either double tap and keep the finger touching the screen or tap and hold for some time, like one second. So with these two techniques, you can drag things with one finger. To conclude, 
We presented and evaluated a solution for safer interactions with public touchscreens. We tried to make the system as generic and universal as possible, so it can be instantly applied to existing interactive kiosks and tables, provided that there is a fast internet connection and some security concerns are addressed. We believe that the use of smartphones as controllers could have even more benefits for public interactions. There could be personalized application-specific interfaces appearing on the smartphone, such as for browsing galleries, navigating in 3D spaces, playing games, or entering sensitive information. Also, multiple simultaneous users could connect and interact with public applications, making the experience more fun and collaborative. Finally, the application could also create a personalized souvenir for the user as a kind of gift that could be saved on her device, posted in social media, and so on. Thank you.